Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome back to PMFIS Current Affairs Prelims Test Series. My name is Ashish Malik, and this is the discussion on test number four. This is your first part, and we are going to take up the first twenty questions for your test. Okay, so let's see what what was there in the test and how you are supposed to approach these kind of questions for your upcoming prelims exam. But before we start, but before we begin, here is the announcement for every UPSC aspirant out there. If you are looking for a high quality test series then here is your chance to get the pmf is test series at just rupees 499 it's highly affordable but at the same time it's going to enrich your upsc preparation the link is in the description below go check out before the special price offer expires do check out the test series it's going to be play wonders for your exam <clears throat> now the very first question which was asked in your test was with respect to the montrex convection okay now this is a very um, very very typical kind of question where we are taking care of the current affairs so based on that this montrex convection was asked now if you are not aware about this convection things become really difficult because these are very specific kind of questions first of all it's not a place montrex is not not a kind of place that you can think or you can relate or you can you know develop some logical thing here the montrex convection this convention is about the agreement that actually governs to one of the most important straits on the world map today and both of them belongs to the country called turkey so these two straits are the bosphorus strait as you can see on the map and the other one is called the strait of dardanelles now this particular agreement is governing these two straits why because they are very critical maritime passages you can see they are going to connect the black sea with the mediterranean sea this is your mediterranean sea here so without these two straits it is almost impossible to connect these two water bodies and there is a interconnecting uh, water body in between these two that is called sea of marmara so in the uh, bosphorus strait is the entry point of the sea of marmara and the strait of dardanelles is the exit point of this uh, sea of marmara right now this particular uh, montrex convention it was signed way back in 1936 okay now this particular is a place called uh, the montrex is a place in switzerland so the convention is named after that place but it has nothing to do with the place that it deals with okay that is why these are this is a very confusing kind of statement montrex has nothing to do with turkey but the convention talks about the two straits of the turkey right now under this particular convention why it is so special and important now here turkey was given the right that if turkey wants it can restrict the black sea access to the warship from the non bordering nation if that kind of situation arises so for that purpose the rights were given to turkey for controlling the entry exit of these uh, uh, straits that is why this strait becomes very important now another thing that you have to be aware of this montrex convention is that there are many original signatories of this convention but please remember united states is not the signatory of this particular convention like the normally you have us as a key partner in many of the international treaties but very surprisingly this montrex convention does not include usa as a signatory it has other signatories including the uk soviet union turkey yugoslavia australia bulgaria japan greece and france and other countries but not the united states it was not a part of montrex convention this these two turkey straits that we just uh, we have seen on the map the Bar the bosphorus and the dardanelles they are the only maritime passage between the black and the mediterranean sea that you already have seen for yourself not to be very uh, to be precise guys there are many straits on the world map but trust me these two are the most critical maritime passages because the entire the entire concept of freedom of navigation uh, you know relates to these bosphorus and dardanelles and above the black sea you have all the uh, the ukrainian crimean peninsula that for for that purpose this is the purpose of connectivity why in 2014 russia invaded crimea it has to do something with the maritime connectivity right so these points are very very critical and very important now if you look at the question with respect to the uh, the montrex convention 
Now you can easily give the answer. Yes, it is the agreement where the two straits, um, you know, are mentioned and they are the linking points and they are the only maritime passages. Yes, they are. And US is not a signatory. So this particular question, I would say it was a tough one because uh, you see in generally what, what we have, where you have statements like only maritime or something like that, maximum times the things becomes really difficult for, for in order to solve this question, you are, you are supposed to be well read uh, about the Montrex convention. You also need to have very good knowledge of the maps. You need to know the history as well. So I would say this was a tough question, very tough. But if you are good with places in news, if you are reading the maps regularly for those places which are in news for some reason or the other, then things become easy for you. But yes, overall this question was tough. I would not suggest you to risk it. If you are not aware, then please skip because this is a hardcore question based on the knowledge of your map, your history, your current, so many things are included. The next question number two was with respect to a health program. Of course, there is absolutely no clue given in the question. But if you have read about a health or if you are even aware about the full form of the a health program, then the things becomes like a cakewalk. What exactly a health program is? If you look at the full form, a health stands for accredited agent for health and extension of the livestock production. The key word is livestock. This a health program, it was launched by Department of Animal Husbandry and Dairy called DAHHD. This program was launched through the memorandum of understanding between the Ministry of Fisheries and Ministry of Rural Development. The two ministries are important for any government scheme, any government program. The star mark point is your ministries. So with respect to the so-called A health, we are talking about the ministries of fisheries, animal husbandry, dairy, because we have a component of lively stock. And since the majority of the livestock that resides in the rural part of India, that's why logically we are adding the rural development ministry as well. You know the logic. It's, it's, a, it's, it's the way you can remember the ministry of A health program. Overall objective of the A health program is to enhance the livestock health and at the same time women's empowerment across several states. Here, the how, how the women are going to be empowered because this program recognizes rural women as Pashu Sakhis. Sakhi is friend. In Hindi, Sakhi means friend. So this program recognizes women, the rural women who are trained uh, uh, people and these rural trained women, they have, they have got their training in veterinary care. They have got a training of breeding assistance to the livestock. So we have lots of Pashu Sakhis included in the program and that's how it's going to empower uh, the women of the rural India um, and that's why this program becomes important. Now if you look at the question, if you look at the statements, what this A health program relates to and trust me, these are the kind of questions which UPSC ask a lot. It's, a, it's one of the favorite, uh, uh, you know, uh, question of the UPSC, the way it is asked in the, in the test series. It's one of the favorite uh, patterns of UPSC. Now you know very well. It is not about organic farming. It is not about agriculture business. It is about the livestock management training. So yes, the answer has to be C. This question was a medium one, but um, you, you, you can risk and attempt if you are aware. But at the same time, I will not recommend you to risk because there is absolutely no clue or no logic can be applied here. So yeah, better you can skip if you're not aware. The only way you can help out yourself is if you know the at least you are aware about the full form, then you can solve it. The next question is about some of the very famous operations that were uh, conducted by the special drives conducted by the Railway Protection Force, the RPF of our country. So you are given four important operations and they are very famous operations like Nanne Farishte, Jeevan Raksha, Narcos, Uplab and everything. Before I get into the detail of these uh, operations because it's, it's, it is important if you are aware of the aim of the operation then only you can solve it. I want you to focus on the third one. The word narcos says a lot in, in itself. We have, we have heard about narcos n number of time that simply at least I can think it has something to do with drugs. 
it has narcos narco there is a famous uh, uh, hollywood show also on narcos right so narcos has to do something with the drugs but it says ensuring safe secure travel does not make any sense so i am 100% sure my option number 3 has to be wrong so that means option 4 can never be a part of my uh, uh, you know answer so now i am left with the other one so the word nane nane farishte think about nane nane is like bacche like the children right so this particular statement says it's finding rescuing the children who are lost separated from their families make sense yes it does make sense jeevan raksha is about protecting the life so this statement this uh, uh, operation aim can be to prevent the accident saving the life at the railway station still relatable still makes sense now the only problem we have is option number 4 uplab uplab means in english it means available available of what uplab translation into available means it can be the improving the ticket availability maybe about enhancing security of the passengers so even i am not i have not read about these operations but th still there is a chance that i can use some logic to get the right answer where the three statements are right and fourth is absolutely wrong so here this question was a medium one but could have been attempted by simply translating the meaning of the operations and applying some of the logic that you can apply in this question the answer should be only three right now if you look at the statements if you look at the programs in depth yes the nanne farishte program is about rescuing the children especially those who are lost or separated from their families this program is a recent one launched in 2021 now the jeevan raksha you know about that it it talks about preventing the accident saving the life at the railway stations um and the the narcos program what narcos is now you know the answer narcos has something to do with the drugs so narcos talks about combating the smuggling of the narcotics because there are many ways narcotics the drugs are smuggled in india so those particular narcotics which are smuggled through the railways we want to combat that and for that purpose we got in 2019 we got the narcos this program was launched under the very famous ndps act stands for narcotic drug psychotropic substances that is the most important act when it comes to drug control in india right this is important where the question was giving you the option as ensuring safe secure travel that particular project is yatri suraksha again very easily Trans, uh, transferable uh, the meaning is very quite clear with the um, with the project name right and uplab is talking about improving uh, ticket availability now if you look at the next question question number 4 talks about the setu bandhan scheme setu in english um, uh, you know talks about the bridge the word setu translates as a bridge now but be very careful the question is asking you which statement is not correct it is asking you not correct so this is again some challenge many times we know the answer but sometimes we neglect the correct non correct kind of thing and we end up uh, losing the marks so be very care about, careful about this now let's talk let's first learn about the setu bandhan scheme what this what this particular program talks about so if you look at the setu bandhan it's an initiative started by ministry of road transport highways again keeping the word setu as bridge into the mind the main objective of setu bandhan is to enhance the road safety overall now please think if i have to enhance my road safety how i am going to do that to enhance the road safety the very first thing is i need to reduce the accidents now how am i going to reduce the accidents the the major problem with the road accident is the traffic that mismanagement of the traffic leads to the accidents right now i have this particular scheme called setu bandhan so to enhancing the road safety reducing the uh, accidents managing the traffic well i am going to focus on construction of the rail over bridges that we have right or we have the rail under bridges or maybe simply bridges on the state roads under the crif uh, program which is central road infrastructure fund so if you look at the question once and if you apply the logic of road safety so yes definitely the, the uh, both the statements are right but you are asked about which statement is not correct here both are correct so answer has to be d 
because both statements are correct and none of the statement is incorrect. This question again was a medium one. You could have taken a bit of risk considering Setu bridge into the mind could have guessed. Otherwise, if you have no option, then you can still go with it. Uh, but something you have to be careful about. But yes, if you if you have this, uh, if you know little bit about that, if you know about the ministry, so be be, be a more careful about ministries. Uh, maybe to just to confuse you, they could have given the answer as Ministry of Railways. The uh, the answer could still be uh, you may be thinking that answer is correct, but be careful about the ministries. Normally, the bridges you have more bridges in terms of uh, road transport comparatively to the rail transport. So maybe that logic will help you out. The answer is supposed to be D in this case. Now, if you want to learn a bit more, because I have I told you that all the bridges and all everything going to be constructed under CRIF. So be very careful what exactly the CRIF is. Now, this particular fund was established way back in 2000. And this is the Ministry of Finance who has got the administrative control over the CRIF. You, you never know, you may have a separate MCQ coming on the, MC, uh, on the CRIF. Then be careful about the ministry. It's the Ministry of Finance having a control over this. This fund comprises of all the cess that is levied and all the excise duty that is levied on petrol diesel. You know, getting money from, from the, that particular cess, you have got the right answer. Now, one question I would like to ask you. For everyone, I want everyone to comment in the, in the uh, description. Uh, I want everyone to give the answer in the comment box. What is the difference between the term cess versus surcharge. I am sure you have heard both the words. But what is the difference between surcharge and cess? Do let me know in the comment uh, below. I am eagerly looking forward. Let's see how many of you get the answer correct. Now the question number fifth was with respect to United Nations. Okay. Now this question says that uh, UN was founded 1945. We all are very well aware of that. UN was after the second world war. Before the Second World War, we used to have the League of Nations, which was founded after First World War. But yeah, it was uh, it was the uh, twenty it was twenty third of the uh, October nineteen forty five when the UN was founded, and this international organization's headquarters is in New York. It is also very well uh, it's a very well known fact. Now please look at the second statement. It says UN General Assembly is a body responsible for maintenance of international peace and security whereas UN Security Council is the main policy making organ body. Look at the names, you know it very well. I mean there are so many bodies, there are so many organizations, there are six in total, there are six organs of UN. Out of those six well known organs of UN, the two are very famous. It is the UN General Assembly. It is the General Assembly that main objective is policy making. And then you have United Nations Security Council, UNSC, whose main objective is to maintain the international peace and security. The name says everything. So need not to be genius to give the answer. Very easy question. Could have been attempted very easily. Answer is, is supposed to be A. With respect to UNSC, B, uh, do read about that there has been a demand for the reforms. There is a constant demand for the reforms of United Nations Security Council. The major demands, the major demands for the reform, number one is it uh, like there are so many countries including India, we want the expansion of the United Nations Security Council. Right now there are only P5, five permanent member. India wants to be a part of it. India wants UNSC permanent mem membership to be expanded. And number two, very important, they, India, is, India is also in the lot of countries are saying the veto power provision needs to be scrapped from the UNSC Security Council. So do read about the UNSC reforms and if you are reading about UNSC and the reforms, don't forget to check out about the G4 countries. These G4 are aggressively, uh, you know, uh, speaking and talking about the reforms of the UN Security Council. India is one of the member of G4, but which are the other three? Do let me know in the comment box. I am giving you one more homework. This is again going to be interesting for everyone. Okay, now I, I just mentioned the six organs of uh, UN. So here are the six organs of the UN. Be very careful. General Assembly, Security Council. This is International Court of Justice. Now be aware, there is another international court which is called ICC, International Criminal Court. So don't get confused between uh, International Criminal Court and International Court of Justice. Then you have UN Secretariat, you have the Economic Social Council 
and the trusteeship council this is what it is so yeah so next question we have is with respect to the nutrient based subsidy okay now <clears throat> you know about the nutrient based subsidy it relates to fertilizer now you know like like whatever food you and me have uh, the food has some micronutrients the food has some mi uh, macronutrients like the what food does for us the fertilizer it has the same function for the soil right now this nutrient based subsidy talks about the subsidy that relates to the fertilizer now specifically the word nutrient based means which kind of fertilizer so we have specific nutrients which we want to supply to the soil that is why the name is nutrient based subsidy i am sure you we all are ab uh, aware about the npk the nitrogen phosphate and potash right okay now this keep this thing in into mind and first talk about let's talk about the nutrient based subsidy and again be very careful the question is asking you which statement is not correct so what exactly the nutrient based subsidy now let's talk about it this particular nutrient based subsidy scheme was launched to way back in 2010 by department of fertilizer that comes under ministry of chemical fertilizer now this particular scheme nutrient based scheme like the like the name says it is going to focus on specific nutrient content of the soil where it focuses majorly on nitrogen phosphate and potash and sulfur in general all the soils of india they are deficit with npk stuff like majority of the soil has some deficiency in terms of npk and these three are the major nutrients that are required for the fertility of the soil now be very careful the nbs scheme talks about the npk plus even sulfur is being uh, is it is also uh, considered as an important part of the fertilizer now under this nutrient based subsidy what we are getting we are focusing on the micronutrients of the soil right the major objective is ensuring nation's food security how am i how am i how am i going to ensure the food security because if i am applying applying the right fertilizer in my soil i am going to increase the yield of the crop right similarly improving the agriculture productivity also ensuring a balanced application of fertilizer means only applying that fertilizer where which particular component lacks not like applying every fertilizer on every kind of soil no very specific whatever nutrient is missing only supply that nutrient to the soil please remember this nutrient based subsidy uh, program it covers all the phosphatic and potassium fertilizer but it does not cover urea not urea urea is not covered under this particular nbs category this is important urea is one of the most important fertilizer right but urea is not covered un under this particular scheme now and again one more thing the government improved recently the government has improved the nutrient based subsidy rate for the rabi season 2023 24 on uh, on the uh, potassium and uh, uh, phosphatic fertilizers and government has recently lowered the subsidies under the nutrient based regimes for some particular crops if you look at the question guys if you look at the question you know the answer all statements you are looking at here are absolutely correct yes the scheme be careful about the yes i can i can think about the department that that logical of course the uh, sometimes the years are very difficult to remember so try to remember this is not a new scheme nbs was launched way back in 2010 yes it is not going to cover the urea and the government has recently approved it is still working very important scheme uh, with respect to the fertilizers now just to tell you one interesting thing if you have read this if you have read the budget if you have the if you have read the budget of 2024 25 now one very interesting thing that was there in, in the recent budget that was uh, presented last month was for the first time the subsidies of the fertilizers was reduced by the government just to give you a context so read about the fertilizer subsidies it is one of the heaviest burden on on the government and for the first time the government has reduced the fertilizer budget fertilizer subsidies budget and that was something the talk of the town so do read about that also the question was asking you which statement not correct every statement is correct answer is supposed to be d none now this particular question yes it was a medium one you could have attempted it very easily because we know about the npk fertilizer and everything they are quite popular guys now talking about the next question okay 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन टॉक्स अबाउट द एस सी एस टी प्रिवेंशन ऑफ एट्रोसिटी एक्ट नाइनटीन एटी नाइन लेट मी टेल यू दिस इज प्रोबेबली वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट सोशल जस्टिस स्कीम्स दैट वी हैव इन आर कंट्री वी थिंक अबाउट एस सी एस टी अफकोर्स वी हैव टू प्रोटेक्ट देर राइट देर इज नो देर इज आई मीन वी आर नॉट हेयर जस्ट टू क्लासीफाई समबडी एज एस सी एन एस टी वॉट इज द बेनिफिट ऑफ putting someone into that category if we are not not going to protect their rights now the this is this is the most impactful this is probably the most important uh, uh, you know social justice scheme when when it comes to the prevention of atrocity against these communities called sc and st now this again this question talks about which statement is not correct again okay let us assume let's presume that you have not read anything about the scheme but at least you know the gist the name says everything you are going to prevent the atrocity right now think about it it provide for establishment of the special courts to try the cases under the act yes should be there because uh, uh, you can't keep delaying the cases of scst there, there is a demand for uh, fast justice and in order to deliver that fast justice you need to have some special courts so that you can focus separately on the issues of scnst right makes sense look at the second statement it says it defines certain crimes against scst as atrocity but does not provide the punishment for the offenses uh, we are we are we can't make any act which is toothless i mean this does not make any logic to me if i am defining crimes why would not i i am going to provide the punishment of course this act very clearly defines the crimes and very clearly uh, provides the punishment for specific acts I mean, this particular offense needs to be punished by this kind of punishment. Everything is crystal clear. This is the most important act. So yes, needs to be wrong. Just by eliminating number two, look at this. Just by eliminating number two, now this statement says not correct. So don't get into the wrong flow. Now not correct means if the answer is not going to include two, should not be my answer. Now look at the third statement. it says all the offenses under the act must be investigated by the officer of the rank of sp and above no in generally 99% cases these kind of uh, uh, offenses are going to be you know investigated by uh, dsp and above ranks directly sps are not generally included dsps are generally the first point of contact with respect to these kind of offenses so yes 2 and 3 both are wrong i got my answer as b because it says not correct this question was a medium one but something you could have attempted you don't have to be a uh, you know you don't have to be a, a brilliant genius uh, with respect to the law you can you can simply solve this question with your common sense so medium but yes something you could have attempted i am sure many of you must have attempted this right okay so <clears throat> talking about this particular act uh yes see it it's been mentioned here it's been mentioned that yes we have a, a dsp minimum and and very interesting part this particular act very clearly talks about the nature and the punishment of the offense now very interestingly under this particular act all the offenses that that are part of the scst prevention of atrocity act all the offenses are recognized as cognizable offenses cognizable offenses are which offenses where you can be arrested without even without warrant even without the warrant the arrest can be made so you can understand the the kind of severity you can understand the kind of uh, seriousness these cases have right very very important plus this punishment prescribes the punishment for neglect of the duties by public servant also those public servants who are not a member of sc and, and st and even if the public servant is not going to fulfill the duty under the act the even the even the public servant are liable to get the punishment if they are not going to do their duty properly i wish i wish this this was a case for every act i wish uh, there is a provision of punishing the public servants also but yeah unfortunately there are there are more chances of misusing it than using it the right way now getting to the next question which is about uh, the pradhan mantri street vendor atmanirbhar nidhi which is called swanidhi yojana now we all are very well aware of of this scheme it was one of the most important schemes that we heard during the covid times right the pradhan mantri swanidhi scheme 
and we know this talks about the street vendors. Now street, you look at the keyword is street vendor. If I have to focus on the street vendor, do you think it is going to be Ministry of Finance? No. Street vendors are mostly, you see most of the street vendors in the urban areas. Where do you, where do you have all these hawkers and everything? The street vendors are majorly relates to the urban places. Cannot be Ministry of Rural Development, cannot be Ministry of MSME. The answer, very obvious answer is supposed to be Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs because you have these street vendors majorly operating in the urban areas or even the semi-urban areas but yes, the Ministry is Housing and Urban Affairs, right? And so this was an easy question, I am sure many of you must have attempted it. Looking at the details of this question, as the name says Pradhan Mantri Swanidhi Yojana, now this particular scheme, it's a central sector scheme by the Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs means it is fully funded, 100% funding to be done by the central government. Now in this particular, why this, why this Yojana, because this Yojana was launched to, uh, three years back, but why this is so much in the news recently because we have helped more than 50 lakh street vendors under the PM Swanadhi Yojana. It, how, how do we help and support the street vendors? We support the street vendors by giving them loans up to 10,000 rupees and let me tell you these are collateral free loans collateral free without any guarantee without any bank guarantee at least 10,000 up to 10,000 rupees can be given to the street vendors and if you are giving a regular repayment there are incentives as well there is also provision of rewarding the digital transactions if you if the if the uh, street vendor is repaying the uh, bank uh, loan uh, as a digital transactions so yes he or she is going to get more rewards for that so basically what we are trying we are going to give them some capital to kick start their business or restart their business we are encouraging them to make more digital payments using the UPI and every, every things like that <coughs> right so this is very important this is very interesting the scheme itself and uh, yeah, one more important thing that was not asked in the question, but still you have to remember that overall implementation of Pradhan Mantri Swanadhi Yojana lies on the shoulders of SIDBI, like Small Industrial Development Bank of India. SIDBI is responsible for implementing this particular scheme. If by chance you have a separate MCQ about the SIDBI, this Small Industry Development Bank of India works are overall under the jurisdiction of Ministry of Finance. This is a star mark point that you have to remember. SIDBI was established way back in 1990 by Government of India as a wholly owned subsidiary of IDBI Bank. Right now it is under Ministry of Finance. This was set up in 1990 under the as an act of parliament and this but after 2000 this was delinked from the IDBI. So right now IDBI has nothing to do. Right now this is the principal financial institutions for promoting, financing, developing the MSME sector and every small or medium activity of business that happens in India. Like for example, like just keep this in mind, it, the word says small industries. So yes, when it, when it talks about small industry, do remember all the MSME sector has lot of aspirations from the SIDB bank which works overall under jurisdiction of Ministry of Finance. So be very careful about that. You may have a question separately coming on that. Next question is with respect to Ministry, uh, with, uh, with respect to Mission Indar Dhanush. This is not a new mission. We have, we have uh, read about Mission Indar Dhanush. Indar Dhanush. It's one of, one of the most important flagship program that is running in the country for the last approximately 9 to 10 years. Now why this question, why this uh, mission is being asked to you again okay now please be very careful first let's let's figure out what mission Indar Dhanush is okay so you, you need to know certain basics about the mission Indar Dhanush this mission was launched by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare way back in 2014 as the name says Indar Dhanush initially what Indar Dhanush is the rainbow rainbow has seven colors now it was specifically targeting the seven diseases for which, for which there is supposed to be universal immunization program, okay. Now those seven diseases initially were targeted as a part of uh, uh, mission Indar Dhanush. Now it says, so of course we are talking about the vaccination, talking about immunization, 
what what else ministry you can think of it 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 is supposed to be it has to be ministry of health and family welfare it's a special catch up program why i'm using the word catch up program why catch up because like you know this program was launched in 2014 its objective was to vaccinate all the children and pregnant women which are left out from the routine immunization so those left out children women were included that is why this was a catch up program to fill the gaps to reach out all those who are uh, still out of the immunization cycle very interestingly it has got many different different variations over a period of time mission in the dhanush recently has got intensified mission in the dhanush called imi 5.0 this was the fifth phase of the mission in the dhanush and recently it was conducted all over india for the first time why first time because it covered all the districts plus very interestingly this mission in the dhanush 5.0 included the children up to 5 year of age best way to remember fifth version fifth phase 5 year of age 5 to 5 connection 5 5 remember so far all the previous campaigns of mission indra dhanush was targeting the children only up to 2 years of the age for the first time we have we have uh, we have uh, shifted a bit of ahead and now we are targeting the children up to the age of 5 and that makes this this mission in the dhanush 5.0 very very special this particular fifth phase of imi also focused on improving the measles and rubella vaccine coverage which with an aim that we want to eliminate measles and rubella by 2023 though this this uh, target was not achieved but yeah a very good progress we have done in this particular direction right now <clears throat> if you look at the statement if you look at the question and here you are supposed to figure out which statements are correct right now look the first statement absolutely no problem the ministry is right yes it it is a special catch up campaign now you know why i am calling it as a catch up one the third statement is wrong because it says even the fifth phase is targeting the children up to 2 years no remember the logic 5 to 5 so mission 5.0 mission in the durish 5.0 up to 5 year of the age of the children the fourth one is correct yeah so answer has to be only 3 now this question of course it was a tough one i'm not saying it's it was an easy one it was a tough one but since you have four statements and the statements are not that difficult so you could have easily risk risk the question because um, the question the options are not very uh, difficult to figure out or to eliminate next question we have is with respect to the uh, neiman pick disease what is this neiman pick disease and uh, what because it was in news now again this is a very typical kind of upsc question where your knowledge of current affairs is going to come and uh, save you neiman pick disease we have absolutely no idea why very very typical name something that we have not heard very often now in this particular kind of question since there are there are very less scope of any guesswork in my opinion this was a tough question because if you are not aware there are 75% chances that you are going to pick up the wrong wrong statement right only 25% options that you are going to get the right one my opinion if you are not aware of this being tough question very specific question no scope of the clue no chances of any guesswork please skip these kind of questions because very direct questions but what exactly neiman pick disease is something we have to be aware of right so talking about the disease the npd the neiman pick disease it is basically a lysosomal storage disease it is caused by one particular acid uh, uh sphig sphingo my elinase deficiency called asmd now this particular disease the neiman pick actually this is commonly known as inherited metabolic disorder so in in very easy way you if you have to think about the npd it's a inherited metabolic disorder why metabolic disorder because here in this disease there is abnormal amount of lipids that builds up in our brains spleen liver lungs bone marrow in these particular what exactly lipids are like excess of fatty materials excess of oil excess of cholesterol in these particular organs 
and that is why this this disease is called inherited uh, metabolic uh, disorder since the word is inherited it is one of the genetic disease it comes under as one of the genetic disease so far there are there is no specific treatment and why it was in news recently because because in india like there, there were many children who, who were suffering from the neiman pick disease the parents of those children requested the government that government must include the npd as uh, as one of the rare disease in india and for that matter this disease needs to be included in, in the national policy for rare disease there was a request and trust me this i i particular i personally believe this was a very important question because uh, a rare disease is something which upsc can pick any time because it's a very important kind of information talking more about the national policy for rare diseases now yes it this particular policy was uh, formulated by ministry of health family welfare what exactly is the meaning of rare disease why any disease is going to be called as rare by name it makes sense rare is something which is which is not very common right but what is the definition particularly well as per india's national policy on rare diseases we call any disease as rare if the number of cases are coming somewhere between 1 to 6 cases for every 10000 people for every 10000 if the cases is 1 to 6 but as per who who has altogether different definition who classifies a rare disease as if the cases if that if if the number of patient is one or less than one for every 1000 population so see both definitions are different if upsc ask you a question and there is no specific thing mentioned about the who or indian definition please go by definition of india because you are talking about upsc your first priority is to be given to the definition given by our national policy okay so we have to talk we have to think in terms of indian context now if you look at the question yeah the question it now looks easy what exactly neiman pick disease it is inherited metabolic disorder now you have a right straight forward question as the answer but again i'm telling you it was a tough one something i would not recommend you to risk because there is absolutely no clue for risking it going by the next question question number 11 now this question talks about the pradhan mantri anusuchit jati abhyudaya yojana many times i have figured out that the name of the scheme actually has the answer all the answers are hidden and in the name of the yojana what is an anusuchit jati like like those caste which are considered to be part of the st communities right abhyudaya abhyudaya is when you are going to develop when you are going to uh, improve the conditions of those particular people abhyudaya is overall development of that particular uh, community right so if you simply talk about if you simply think about the name it is a scheme for reducing the poverty of sc community yes i know about the anusuchit jatis that is st uh, scheduled caste communities now how am i am i going to reduce the poverty so for 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 the purpose of reducing the poverty the best way is generating additional employment opportunity this question this statement looks very much okay with me second second statement says the scheme falls under ministry of social justice and empowerment now this you have to be little careful because you know in india we have lots of schemes under so many different ministries so for this i have to be bit more careful but in reality that yeah that is the right answer that is the right answer that is true the, the third statement says it provide the scheme provides financial support for district state level projects aimed at socio economic upliftment the word abhyodaya means when you are uplifting the communities socio economically so that is the meaning of abhyodaya now one of its component is pradhan mantri adarsh gram yojana because this scheme actually focus on transforming the villages with a significant uh, uh, sc community uh, sc population in the villages and we want to make those sc villages as an adarsh gram so if i have to do my guess work yes i would have given the right answer as d this was a medium question but yeah answers are quite simple options the statements are quite simple i could have attempted that right simply by understanding the name of the scheme the 
अनुसूचित जाति अभ्योदय योजना सो यस इट इज टॉकिंग अबाउट एंड बी वेरी केयरफुल दिस पी एम अजय योजना इट इज हंड्रेड परसेंट सेंट्रली स्पॉन्सर्ड ऑल फंडिंग टू बी गिवन बाई स्टेट अंडर द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ सोशल जस्टिस एम्पावरमेंट ओके दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट नॉ प्रीवियसली वी यूज टू हैव मेनी डिफरेंट डिफरेंट स्कीम्स लाइक फॉर एग्जाम्पल प्रधानमंत्री आदर्श ग्राम योजना एंड वी वी यूज टू हैव बाबू जग जीवन राम योजना एंड वी ऑल्सो यूज टू हैव स्पेशल असिस्टेंस स्कीम फॉर एस सी कास्ट सब प्लान्स नाउ गवर्नमेंट हैज मर्ज ऑल दीज स्कीम्स अंडर वन प्रधानमंत्री अजय योजना दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इन दिस वी आर गोइंग टू रिड्यूस द पॉवर्टी ऑफ द ऑफ दी एस टी एस सी कम्युनिटी राइट हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डू इट वी आर गोइंग टू डू इट थ्रू स्किल डेवलपमेंट बाय इनकम जनरेटिंग फॉर दोज पर्टिकुलर कम्युनिटीज बाय इंप्रूविंग दर सोशो इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट इंडिकेटर दैट इज हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू डू इट राइट दैट इज इंपॉर्टेंट इफ यू लुक एट द क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेल्व द वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग क्वेश्चन द क्वेश्चन सेज विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग एंटाइटी रिलीजेज the periodic labor force survey in india okay now this question is talking about there are two things one keyword is labor another keyword is survey so if i keep my mind as labor if this report this survey talking about the labor well the very first thing that may come into my mind is the option number 1 niti ayog no of course not rbi hai rbi has nothing to do with this my only confusion is with between option a and c isn't it i'm sure that was your confusion as well because there are two keywords if i if i take my keyword as labor then my answer is supposed to be ministry of labor if i keep my mind as survey as a keyword so all the surveys asked to be done by ministry of statistics and program implementation must be in this particular case the right answer is c so yes this question was a was a medium level kind of question but i would suggest if you have this much chance if you have a 50 50 chance of course you can still take a bit of risk okay i mean that is now that is up to your luck but yes the chances could be taken because at least i am i am at a 50 50 uh, kind of situation so talking about the uh, this particular survey so what what i have to remember for my future exam is it is the ministry of statistics program implementation that releases a quarterly bulletin on uh, on the periodic labor force survey why this periodic labor survey is so special what make this so so special what in this particular survey this survey follows a current weekly status approach what is the meaning of current weekly status approach that means if there is any person who has not even worked for at least one hour in the last one week but that person is constantly seeking the work he is willing to work but not been able to do work at least for minimum 1 hour then that person is to be considered unemployed if that person has worked more than 1 hour in the last one week then that person is to be considered as an employed so this this particular kind of interesting criteria make this uh, periodic survey very very interesting okay this is this is important now overall if you look at the uh, uh, the periodic labor force survey this whole survey works on three indicators number 1 labor force participation rate number 2 worker population ratio and number 3 unemployment rate now every single word has a potential as a separate stand out stand alone mcq what is the meaning of labor force participation rate this is very interesting and important labor force participation rate means percentage of the persons in the labor force who are working or they are seeking for the work okay it it includes both if i am already working i am i am a part of labor force working if i am already working or if even if i am willing to work i am seeking work then also i am going to be considered as a labor force participation rate right? but at least i am available for the work that is the that is the case now very very differently there is another term called as worker population ratio that is specifically talking about the percentage of the employed person in the population here it is only those only the working one the actual working one not the seeking for work but the actual one so of course by any time if you think by logic so worker population ratio is always going to be less than the labor force participation rate isn't it because the the seeking workers are always going to add up no 
and then you have the unemployment rate it is the percentage of the person unemployed among the person in the labor force always remember when whenever you have to calculate the unemployment rate it is always going to or uh, going to be calculated on labor force uh, participation rate it it is that that ratio is always going to be calculated on the total availability of the workers be working or seeking for work so these are small small things which are important for your exam that's why i have explained i hope you guys going to keep them in mind uh, next time whenever you are going to take up the exams okay small small uh, economics concept very important for you next question is about malnutrition among the children in india okay now this particular question is interesting we have a little bit idea about the malnutrition we read newspapers a lot and we know when it comes to malnutrition india's overall uh, overall india's malnutrition status is not very good right so we are still suffering from the problem of malnutrition and especially the malnutrition of the children in india okay the very first thing just let's see you have no idea about anything just read the first statement it says ministry of health and family welfare has launched a protocol for management of malnutrition in children at the anganwadi level okay this statement looks correct for many reasons but in real terms this statement is not correct why whenever you think about anganwadi this is a key word i'm telling you just keep this in mind this is a very important point you think about anganwadi you think about malnutrition in children the best the best you can think of is the scheme called icds integrated child development scheme you think of children you think of anganwadi always think about one ministry and that is ministry of women and child development so family welfare is not going to be part of any anganwadi scheme like mostly i'm not saying absolutely no but yeah 99% anganwadi and child development is the domain of ministry of women and child development for that purpose only that ministry is separately constructed so first cannot be the right answer look at the sta second statement now this second statement says uh, the protocol provide this this protocol for management of malnutrition it provides guideline for identifying managing the children with severe acute malnutrition yeah that is the only purpose a protocol uh, uh, guidelines are going to do so second looks very much correct very much okay now the third statement has a little new concept called buddy mother concept which i am sure many of you are not aware of so first you need to learn about the uh, buddy mother concept what exactly is this bud, uh, buddy mother so see the concept is very interesting now the this portal of management of malnutrition among the children it has a mother, uh, buddy mother concept it means the mother of a healthy baby is going to guide the mother of a malnourished child at the anganwadi center every week and assam was the first state to have initiated this particular concept of buddy mother buddy is friend right so every mother of a healthy child is going to assist and guide the mothers of malnourished child it's it's a wonderful scheme and this is for the first time first time that india is focusing on malnutrition at at as grassroots level as anganwadi level and trust me we have this gut feeling since now we are talking about malnutrition at a very grassroots level this is going to transform india and india's malnutrition for for a very good reason right so now yes in this particular case we have got the two statements correct the second and third be very careful about the state they may have switched the state and may, so be aware the the buddy mother has a concept related to the assam the first one being wrong answer has to be only two now this particular question i'm i'm sure it was a medium one but something you could have attempted or at least you could have risk it because first and second statements are very obvious one being wrong one being right the next question is with respect to pradhan mantri matru vandan yojana this is not a new scheme this is not a new scheme but why then we have we have asked you this question now this scheme has recently got into the news for many important reasons why 
we have we have asked you this with this scheme pradhan uh, pradhan mantri matru vandan yojana we know about this yojana very well now this particular yojana talks about giving financial assistance to all the pregnant and lactating mother of the countries right and this is a central sponsored scheme it's a direct benefit scheme direct benefit that financial assistance of 6000 rupees is going to directly come into your bank accounts that is why the name is dbt the direct benefit scheme now why it is in news recently because to promote digital india make in india atmanirbhar bharat now we have got a new pradhan mantri matru vandan portal so we have got a digitalized version of this particular yojana dedicated portal for this yojana and that is why being a part of digital india now we have got this scheme in the news now you know now you have already understood the pradhan mantri matru vandan yojana is about giving financial assistance to pregnant lactating mothers and it was launched way back in 2017 by ministry of women child development but right now you have no scheme called pradhan mantri matru vandan yojana why because recently under the mission shakti all the all the all the scheme was actually merged and it was the scheme was uh, merged with the mission shakti from 2022 so very star mark point now you have got mission shakti subsiding subsuming the pradhan mantri matru vandan yojana okay this scheme now this is very important this particular scheme is implemented as per the provision of national food security act now this is hard to remember but it is true overall umbrella of national food security has also got this particular scheme now <coughs> the the this particular scheme talks about giving financial assistance so yes it is going to provide you cash incentive why because whenever a mother uh, is expecting to deliver a baby of course and that mother is working so there are there are more chances of that mother losing the wages because ultimately you have to take a maternity leave also up, uh, like as a post care thing so yes a um, lot of women were not uh, you know they were not uh, able to rest properly to take care of themselves and their babies so in order to compensate that wage loss the government has started this pradhan mantri matru vandan yojana and the major objective was to improve the uh, overall health of the pregnant women and the lactating mothers as well so it's it, it's a very important scheme that we are talking about now if you look at the statements all the schemes are all the statements are absolutely correct 1 2 and 3 so this scheme is very obvious and since it's an old scheme i would say it was a medium one but something that you could have attempted very very easily there is no twist and turn at all in the question a straight forward question was asked next one was with respect to the national food security act 2013 what is what now the question says which of the following statement best reflect the features of this national food security act okay now let's say that i have not really read the scheme very well can i still give the answer yes i can look at the national food security act look at the first statement it says primarily focus on providing subsidized food to children under the age of 5 do you think it is only going to focus on the children under the age of 5 no i am talking about a national food security and food security is not just limited to children so cannot be my right answer look at the second statement it says it guarantees right to food only to economically weaker sections of society no national food security has many eligible beneficiaries not just limited to economical weaker sections so second also cannot be the answer so be careful about the words only also all kind of thing look at the d it it is a global initiative aimed at eradicating hunger in developing countries of course not cannot be the right answer at all we are talking about our national food security i am not going to eradicate the hunger of so this is the big big no matlab this is something you you could have eliminated even in your sleep right my only logical answer left is answer number c so in this case even without knowing much about the scheme i am still able to get the right answer it was a medium one but something i could have attempted very easily right so yeah be careful 
about this particular scheme. Yes, it is true this scheme is the largest food security program of the world. That is true. It is largest food security program, but not about eradicating the poverty of the developing world, right? That is not the case. And uh, you know about all the features of uh, National Food Security Act. <coughs> you can read them very straightforward and very, very uh, important scheme. But it's, it's, a, it's an old scheme. I'm not going to uh, elaborate on the points much. The next question we have is Mera Yuva Bharat, MY Bharat scheme. Now, this is a tricky one. Why tricky? Look at the look at the scheme. First, let, let's let's discuss about the scheme. This is not very famous scheme, so we need to have a little discussion on that. Then we'll come back to the question. Mera Bharat, uh, Mera Yuva Bharat, right? MY Bharat. Now, why it was in news recently? Because the union cabinet has recently approved the establishment of an autonomous body. The name of this autonomous body is going to be Mera Yuva Bharat. Overall, since the word is Yuva, Yuva is youth. So overall, which ministry? Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports. So connect the word Yuva with the youth and you will get the answer of the ministry. Now, what exactly this MY Bharat is about? It, it is this autonomous body is actually going to be, it aims to be a technology driven platform for youth and youth led development specifically focusing on the youth led development this portal this platform is going to act as a one stop shop for all the young people and ministries it will actually serve as a bridge like a yuva setu between the government and the citizens talking about the feature the mera yuva bharat scheme or the program going to benefit the youth especially those youth which are 15 to 29 years of the age because as per India's national youth policy, we have, we have, we have included these bracket years as, a, as a, they, have, they are being defined as youngsters, the youth. So as per national youth policy, everybody falling in 15 to 29 is going to be considered as a youth one. Overall, this Mera Yuva Bharat is going to focus on leadership development, social innovation, aligning youth with the development, that is the kind of thing. And yes, it is going to create a centralized database on the youth of this country. And it is important. Why? Because India right now is going through a demographic, uh, demographic dividend. And India is a young country with an, uh, with an average of 27, 28 years. India has a huge potential in terms of demographic dividend. Why? Because we, we are still the youngest, one of the youngest country of the world. So, Logically, there has to be these kind of programs. Now, if you look at the options, of course, all of the above is not correct. My right answer is it's a technology driven platform for youth led, youth -led things, right? Okay, so now clearly, if, if, even if I, if I have to make some guesswork, I'm talking about the Yuva Bharat. Yuva Bharat, do you think that it has something to do with Ministry of Health and Family Welfare? No, it is supposed to be Ministry of Youth not the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. And yes, you know that, um, yeah, this was, a, this was a tricky one because in, um, in certain schemes, certain policies, yes, in India, we consider child till the age of 18, yes, but as per national youth policy, youth starts from 15. So yeah, this, this first statement was a bit tricky, I, I, uh, I accept. You guys may have been, may have got confused between A and C. But the right answer is supposed to be C here. Okay. Now, yeah, it was a tough one. Medium, medium to tough. But uh, something you could have risked it. Because you can eliminate other statements as well, right? Okay. Next question. Next question is with respect to question number 17. Now, this is about the National Medical Commission. Okay. National Medical Commission. Which statement is correct? You have to figure out. Now, in this case, guys, both statements are correct. Why? National Medical Commission, very, very famous. It's a statutory body we have recently established under the National um, uh, Medical Commission Act 2019. Yes, it is true. And now we have got uh, the National Medical Commission is responsible for conducting all the major screen tests uh, in our country, all the NEET UG or the NEET PG post graduation, undergraduate program. All the tests are to be conducted by National Medical Commission. Now, very simple, straightforward question, easy, something you could have attempted. But why this was in news recently? Because there is a logic to it. 
I am sure you are, you are aware of something called as uh, something called as Indian Medical Council, uh, Medical Council of India. So so far we used to have Medical Council of India doing all these activities, but in 2019 the Medical Council of India was replaced by National Medical Commission as a statutory body. That was the first time it was in the news. Right now it is in news for some other reasons. Right now the National Medical Commission issued a, actually it issued a regulation that temporarily suspended the establishment of new medical colleges and expansion of existing one in many states. For that matter many of the states from South India they were objecting there was a heavy criticism from southern states because they no longer qualified for additional medical medical education seats. So yes there is, there is some controversy going around and uh, issues issues going around this particular commission but it is important I am sure something you could have attempted easily. Now next question number 18 was with respect to the APAR ID. Now again the full form is the key look at the full form automated permanent academic account registry the key word is academic account academics keep this in mind if there is something about the academic account the best ministry you can think of is ministry of education right yes now it talks about automated permanent academic account registry now look at the second statement it says it aims to simplify education by reducing need for physical document yes the statement looks correct because I'm talking about the automated things and when I am talking about automated, I am no longer want to carry my physical documents with me, right? There has to be one academic account where I can go and access all my documents in the digital format. So first and second looks very much correct. But please look at the statement number three and four. And you, you can clearly figure out the problem with the statements. Third statement says, registration for creating an APAR ID is compulsory. In India, there is hardly any scheme and especially when it comes to digitalization, hardly the schemes are compulsory. Government always start the things as a voluntary schemes, not as a compulsory scheme. So third cannot be the right answer. And the fourth statement is absolutely vague. It says there are no worries for any privacy concerns. Of course, there are worries. Whenever the things are going to go digitalize, for every digital scheme, we always have privacy concerns. We are very much concerned how our information is going to be stored, going to be processed, going to be used, going to be secured. Privacy concerns are always going to be there, right? So right answer is supposed to be B. Question was a medium one, but something you could have attempted because third and fourth statement gives you enough options to eliminate those statements. Now talking a little bit more about the APAR ID, right? So yes, it is actually very famously the APAR is a formal name. The more common name is one nation, one student ID. If this was the question, I'm sure you could have attempted the question even better. So be aware of the alternative names. So one nation, one student ID, also called the APAR ID, was a program launched by Ministry of Education to help the students keep track of their academic information. Like every student now can access their degrees, their scholarship reward, all at one particular place. That is why the name is one nation, one student ID one student ID right now very interestingly we have got all these set up under national education policy 2020 now like I told you the all this is voluntary not compulsory right so Aadhaar number is used here but it is used only for the verification purpose and not shared during the registration so yeah there is no certain things question number 19 now this is a question with respect to a committee called Justice Amit, uh, Amitav Roy committee. Now for me this was a very specific question, very particular fact oriented. You have absolutely no choice of guessing because there is no logic like what committee is for what purpose. Committees can be of for any purpose, right? So what is this Justice Amitav Roy committee? First know about that statement. So this statement uh, or this committee says that um, this was a committee on prison reforms. Justice Amitra, uh, Amitra Roy committee was with respect to the committee on prison reforms. And, the, and this was formed after Supreme Court uh, directed in 2018. Now in this committee 
on prison reforms one of the major finding was the overcrowding among the under trials in india this is very unfortunate more than 2/3 of the total prison population in india is still under trial they are they are into the jail they are the case is still not finalized and they are still under trials and many of the times in india the person actually serves more term in the jail than the offense that he has he or she has committed and is supposed to uh, you know to uh, supposed to uh, uh, get the jail term so in india there is overcrowding and majority of the overcrowding crowding is because of the under trials when it says 2/3 means for every 3 person at least 2 in india are still under trial and it is above the global average global average is 1 in 3 prisoners our average is 2 in 3 prisoners so this committee talks about the reforms the prison reforms right okay now only this much information is needed so now i know yeah the first statement is correct second statement let's just be logical about it the second statement says women prisoners have better conditions than men regarding access to basic facilities do you think that kind of thing is possible no absolutely big no applying your common sense you know the conditions of women prisoners are even worse they are not going to be hygienic conditions they are going like there is a there is a report that says less than 40% women get the basic as basic facility as sanitary napkins how we can think of better conditions than men absolutely no not true so which statement is correct the first statement is correct yeah the first one second is not women's conditions are even worst uh, you know that we have worse conditions than than the male one only there are few uh, exceptions like goa delhi puducherry only the prisons of these particular places they allow the female inmates to meet their children without bar or glass separations less than 40% pris uh, prisons provide sanitary napkin to female inmates and you think about better facilities not at all possible in fact there is a the, uh, this report has also given us some shocking statements there is a significant cause of unnatural death in indian jails we have seen in the year 2017 to 2021 where up has got the highest number of suicides or kind of unnatural death uh, that were there so yeah the, the the trends are pretty disturbing last question you have is with respect to the election commission of india okay which statement is correct with respect to election commission of india so um, the first statement says the powers are the power of election commission of india are limited to suspending or withdrawing the party recognition yes we can relate with election commission of india very well election commission of india can deregister a party yes it can but this option is highly restricted obviously i mean this was an easy question i'm i'm sure everyone has attempted uh, what are the details of the question please look at the details first now <clears throat> election commission of india already is in news for many reasons good and bad do read a lot about election commission because it is likely you are going to get mcqs on this particular body now when it comes to election commission of india it has power of suspending withdrawing the party recognition under the election symbol order the but this can only happen if the party any political party violates the model code of conduct or disobeys the election commission order in that particular case it has a limited power of suspending withdrawing the party recognition second statement even election can deregister a party but of course it is not easy to deregister a party in our country uh, this option is highly restricted there are certain condition there are specific conditions under the representation of people act 1951 if that is the case only then uh the things are going to get restricted what condition if the party has done some fraud if the party's loss of allegiance to constitutional principle if the party is being declared unlawful by the government under specific act then only election commission can register now please be careful whenever you think of elections representation of the people act is going to be the most important act so do read about it in detail like majority of the things with respect to election majority of the power comes from this particular act very very important overall 
election commission is being mentioned under article 324 to 329 do read that also but yes don't forget to get the knowledge of representation of people act 1951 so that is all from my side guys in the in the first part of the video stay tuned with our uh, youtube channel and the app of pmfis we are going to come up with the second video very 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 soon so all my best wishes for the upsc aspirants i hope you have enjoyed and you have learnt a lot from this video discussion if that is the case please do let me know in the comment section below i'm eagerly waiting to know the feedback of all these videos if you are finding our channel informative do like us and this is ashish malik going to see you in the next video soon take care god bless you jai hind